Hi there, and welcome back to another episode of the Visual Studio Toolbox. I'm really glad to be back here, and today I have one of my colleagues, so I'm excited. Erica, welcome to Toolbox. Hi, how are you? Good, good. It's going to be, I think, a great day. We're going to talk about an app that we built for the Recent Connect event, and uh, Erica okay. is the mastermind behind the demo. So why don't you kind of introduce yourself fully and tell us about what we're going to look at today. So I am Eric Ayerly. Uh, I work in the product marketing team. Um, I am very passionate about Visual Studio and Azure. And I work on keynote demos. Um, it's not just me. It's a group of people working on the it's apps. It's not just you. You're not like, the only person coding <laughs> it's the whole a, thing. No, it's not. It's a, it's a really good set of people working on yeah. this. So and, and this is kind of our baby. And, and after the keynote, uh, we were asked to share the code. Um, and so we are excited to show it to people and like, tell a little bit more about how we built it and what's in it and, and share the URLs for GitHub and just you know, have it out there so people can use it. Okay, awesome. Yeah, the big thing that we want the audience to take away from this, I think, is number one, you know, we, we have lots of things that we built as demos for various events, but for the big events like Connect, we always try to share the source code out. So the big thing about this video is that at the end of the video, folks can go and actually go and take a look at the source code. It's going to be up in GitHub. We, we try to publish everything we can. Mm -hmm. Not every single demo makes it up there, as, as we know. Not, not every demo is perfect, but we, we've got some great repos, right. and uh, you, you have a great overview. So why don't we jump in? Okay, let's do it. So, I mean, the very first thing I wanted to share is, like, go watch the keynotes. If you haven't watched them, uh, they're on Channel 9. Yeah. There's two amazing keynotes. One is a Scott Guthrie keynote and a Hanselman keynote. Um, two we Scots. Have Two Scots, yeah. and we have 15 amazing demos. Um, not all of them are based on the scenario. Some are just showing on the tooling, but they're like all awesome, and you should go watch them. Yeah. Um, and our first keynote is based on application innovation. So you'll see like the world we're living. You know, it's a world of mobile apps. Like everybody has their phones and their tablets, and like the mobility is important. So we we try to show how to build mobile applications, and then they're also everywhere, so they need to be on the cloud. So we talk about mobile first and cloud first. Also, we live in a world where we have like lots of languages and tools and platforms and like iPhones and Androids and too like many Windows machines. <laughs> too many languages. Too many. Too many so iPhones. we, I mean, we're like we're pushing openness, and so we're like um, a platform for our, any developer, you know, any application, any platform. And the last thing that I think is very interesting is the intelligence of the apps. Like you need apps that like get to know you and personal personalize the experience for you. So that's what we try to build on and show on at the first keynote. Yeah. So, so the context of the audience is that we, we had mm -hmm. all these requirements come in from, from our management and the things we wanted to talk about. Right. And your job was to actually go and build out demos that were, you know, we're not building production applications, but things that are realistic right. enough that we can share the code as a demonstration to the audience. That's why we're doing this video for you folks. And then um, we're publishing all the code we can, and it should work with the bits that are, that are public. We're not publishing things that are based on, on sort of, you know, puffware. Not, nothing is going to be, oh, you can't do this yet. If it's published, you can go ahead, download it, and run it with the bits that we have available. And uh, you're going to go for some of the scenarios and how right. we broke it up, basically. Yeah, that's exactly right. So cool. our second keynote uh, was based on productivity. And we shared a little bit more of like what you can do with uh, different tools. Yeah. Uh, during Connect, we announced Visual Studio 2017 RC, and also Visual Studio for Mac, and Visual Studio Mobile Center, and TFS 2017. So uh, with all these tools, you can build a lot of different applications, of course, and you know you can take advantage of the cloud and Azure. You yeah, so have to mention like cognitive services and VSTS right, in the cloud exactly. and all the other stuff you, you have to work with. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So so that's our second keynote. So uh, the story I want to tell today is like why is it that we build these demo applications and what is it like you get with it? Um, so we are trying to inspire developers, right? Uh, we live in a world where like, the most important person in the enterprise today is the developer. We, we definitely think so. At least. Yeah, of course we are. Yeah. So, um, we're not biased at all. And we're no, just not at all. <laughs> we're just focused on developers. No, I, I, exactly. But, no, but really, I mean, think about the world we live in, right? Um, with like, Uber and Netflix and like, all, like, banks that are like, using all these technologies. So you really have to think how to innovate, right? It's, yeah. it's very important. So, so we try to build uh, a scenario that is inspiring and that can show how you can integrate different technologies and platforms into building something that is like for the real world, right? right. So um, in this case, I mean, what you're going to get, right, is like an application that we build where we're using backend services. So everything is on Azure. Um, we have mobile applications. Um, people are on the go, so you need people to get something on phones. Um, yeah. 
then we have websites. Um, websites for like people to get to know the company, but also like the actual company has a website to understand their customers and the business. Yeah, um, it's a full end-to-end -end scenario. I mean, just, right. just on the slide here, we can see kind of how, how we broke it up, right, logically, and how exactly. folks will be able to in integrate the, uh, into this experience through GitHub and start looking at the code. And um, we, we have cool stuff like bots. We have, you know, uh, good hype words like microservices. But I mean, all right. this stuff is built on top of things that we've just released or released at the event. So the, the bot framework, right, we've got uh, functions in Azure, all the stuff that you're going to kind of talk about and, and go through. And it's right. all built on ASP.NET Core, I believe, all the back yes, end stuff. Yes, uh, we have .NET Core. Um, and so it's it's just like using the latest of the latest, which is yeah. like super nice and fun. I, I'm sure there, there were no problems getting all this ready before the bits shipped and <laughs> before, the, before it's all available. Like Folks, I don't, I don't think, uh, appreciate sometimes like how we as behind the scenes people have to right. struggle with the fact that engineering is still working on stuff that they're going to ship and we have to start preparing demos and writing scripts and building apps and things that we hope, like you said, inspire developers, but it's not easy to do and I, I'm always amazed at what we come up with at the end, but uh, yeah, let's, let's keep going here. We'll show yeah. folks what we built. It is, it is a really good partnership with engineering and actually like just talking about something else. This is built by a team of people that are from engineering and marketing and like different product teams. And also we work with our MVPs, MVPs and mm. our customer team. So we all work together on this. So, so you know, we, we all brainstorm and get like the best uh, we can on, on these scenarios. And then the idea is that you can use it as sample code later after the keynote. Right. Or if you want to do demos, like, I mean, you have some good samples. Yeah. I don't think it was always our goal to sort of publish all these demos out. I mean, I, I've known plenty of events where you saw something in like on stage right. or some build years ago and you never got the bits afterwards. But we, we, at least our team is really trying to make sure that we build things that we can share later. It's part of the investment. I mean, these things are not cheap to make from a people perspective, vendors, graphic designers. I mean, all the stuff that has to go into making a very beautiful keynote. Right. Now we're making sure it also is, is something people can yeah, access. Yeah, it's out there. It's for the people. Like, we build it for them. So cool. So um, the scenario. So this year, like every year, we change uh, the scenario. Um, if you've just used the apps we built before, we've done a health clinic and uh, my shuttle, which is kind of an uh, Uber-like yeah. scenario. The two uh, we did my driving. We, we show, yeah. We oh yeah, my drive was the the build one we did last exactly. time. Exactly, and then we did like a little shopping app for Samarin and Asher. So, but this time we wanted to build something around bikes. Um, bike sharing is a very popular concept that is like growing in a lot of different cities across the world. Uh, it's an easy thing to understand, um, but it's also a really good scenario that enables to show how we can build something that is like intelligent, uh, both for the people, like the, the customers, right? And right. also for the enterprise. Yeah, there's a lot of scenarios that the bike theme sort of works with, right? And that's where you, you right. build a lot of apps that don't feel kind of like contrived, they do feel like, oh, these are real scenarios that if you were building this right. whole system, this is what you'd build out. So that, that's at least what we try to accomplish. Yeah, exactly. And actually, there's a lot of like really good companies who have done some of this. And what we're trying to show here is like how you can use all these technologies and like uh, products we're announcing to like improve your business and, and you know, make it better uh, experience for your customers. Yeah. So, I mean, the whole idea is that um, it's a smart uh, bike sharing system. It's in New York and in Seattle. So you'll see all our like apps say New York uh, and- um, It's and your favorite city. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, and then um, the idea is that the experience is both personalized, but it's also very modern and intelligent, right? So, so we have apps that work on different devices um, and platforms. Yeah, and the, the funny anecdote here is I always find like there's small pictures of people in our apps, and that's <laughs> always somebody from the team or somebody yeah. from engineering. I've, I've had my face in there. It's, it's always fun to see our, yeah. our folks <laughs> in, in, in the limelight. Yeah, and I shots. mean, James is there because he was like one of the masterminds, of course, behind like the submarine applications. He then with it uh, at uh, Connect at the keynote. Um, and so, yeah, you'll see James and Beth and Lara and like all my phones and my apps because, you know, we work together on, on yeah. doing I, this. I like it. James Montenango, the mastermind. That should be his title in the gal. We should, <laughs> we should see if HR lets us I'm sure he'll it. like it. Yeah, um, he'll, he'll vote yes, yeah. but it's harder. Anyway, let's, uh, so, so basically that's the concept. And like what we're trying to show is, um, we have to think about the enterprise first. You know how how is it that they can take advantage of, of technology? You know for for managing their business. Mm -hmm. So in this case, just imagine you know you have ten thousand bikes right distributed in a city. Um, the bikes have um, IoT devices, so you can track them. You know you can know where they are. 
um, and you want to manage uh, your business with intelligence. So, right. I mean, for example, if, if there's going to be, uh, you know, an event or something, like you have a 4th of July event, right, and y you want to relocate your bikes, mm -hmm. and you, you, you need that kind of intelligence to run your business. Um, also, um, with cognitive services, you know, now you can do a lot of fun things and are great. For example, think about like not just a bike sharing scenario, but uh, so any scenario where you need a kiosk. Uh, you can just show up, I mean, show your face, um, yeah. have uh, interaction with an application through voice recognition, speech recognition, without even having to type anything and then do a transaction. Yeah, so, it's so cool. it opens a lot of scenarios up for folks. It is. I mean, the AI. Um, the, the whole concept of AI, like it's really changing the way we, we, we think about like apps of the future. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just representing that. And then for bike riders, like, I mean, the scenario is exciting. Like, think about this, like you can go green and, you know, you can like save time and money, you know, going to places like just get a bike anywhere, like wherever you are, like find a, a bike station that is close to you, um, rent the bike get the bike, go to a place, return it, and like, I mean, you have an experience, right? And, yeah. and you and have a mobile experience that really suits exactly. your need, just like the mm -hmm. enterprise has their, you know, kiosks for you to interact with, or has their, you know, analytics to make sure that their system right. is working well. It's cool. Yeah, and finally, like, bots, I mean, you know, it's kind of a trend also. So just, just think about this, like, um, how you interact with your customers. So um, the, thing, I th the thing we thought about doing here is, customer service, like personal assistance through a bot. Yeah. So you're on the road and, I mean, you get a flat tire or you lose your bike or like something is, is not going well with your experience and you're on the road, right? Like you're on the go with your bike. So you talk to a bot and the bot interacts with you. And like, I mean, I think, I think that also changes the way, you know, we, we do things and we interact with technology and apps. Yeah, I, I've heard and some people kind of say that bots are, are just glorified search engines and, and that, you know, there, there's some truth to that, but I think the reality is when you're building an experience around, around a bot, you can actually integrate it quite deeply into your application. It, the bot can know where, like, where you are just if you allow it automatically. The bot can understand the context of the, the business transaction that's happening. It could know, well, you just took out a bike, so if you're say, saying some search query, it can know how to react to it. So bots are, are just very right. flexible things, and I think, think folks sh shouldn't ignore them just because it, it is, in some, some ways, something that we're familiar with, but it is creating this whole new world of like, integration that's possible right. from the application, but then like Skype, right? So you can Skype exactly. to a bot or, or whichever mm -hmm. IM service you're using. It's really yeah. cool stuff. Yeah, definitely. So a little bit of like the architecture, and um, of course, you know, I mean, you have no idea about the brainstorming sessions, like the things that we come up with, but we have to this find... This work, is what you're trying to say. No, just it's building just... building this diagram, it takes it, no, a little it bit feels, of but It's also like, there's so much stuff, like I can tell you, like there's a million other things that we thought about that are not here. Like in a way, we have to keep the scenario simple enough that it's easy to explain and to understand. Mm -hmm. But like you can envision expanding and adding like more blocks of technologies to expand this business, right? Yeah. So, but generally speaking, like um, as I explained earlier, so you have a bike rider that can get like a marketing website to get to know like what's going on with this business and how do I get in, how do I sign up? Um, then you also have your, you know, summary applications, like no matter what uh, kind of uh, platform you're using, whether you have an iPhone, an Android or a Windows phone, you can get the app, right, and that's where you can rent the bikes um, and you can interact with the application. You also have the kiosk, I mentioned this, where mm -hmm. you can just go and like rent the bike um, without even typing anything. And what do we use to build the kiosk app? Is that a UWP app? It's a UWP app. Okay. Um, and we're using cognitive services and I'll go cool. through that. But um, yeah. basically, um, yeah, so the idea is that y you can get that kind of interaction for the customer. Um, in the middle, of course, like we're like cloud first, right? And so Azure, Azure is a big thing. Everything's on Azure um, on the back end. Um, we try to create an architecture using microservices. So we have microservices on .NET Core and Node.js. Um, and we're using Azure Functions, Subservice, um, ACS for multi-container apps. Um, we store our data on SQL DB. Um, the IoT device, like that's an interesting thing. Uh, so obviously we don't have like 10,000 bikes, right? But like here the idea is you have, you know, an IoT device on, on the bikes, right? And, and you can get all that 
data and think about it. It's a scenario of big data. Like think about like all the GPS coordinates that you get from all these yeah. bikes, right? So um, we have a scenario where we use um, Azure Data Lake um, to store all that. And then you can use USQL, for example, to like get queries on like, where is this specific bike on this exact time? Yeah. So I mean, that, that's kind of what we're trying to show. And then thinking of the enterprise where you have a, like your private website where you have like Power BI, for example, embedded, and, and then you can get analytics on like what's going on with your business. Um, you also have um, a maintenance application. So if someone is on the road and reports an issue, you get a notification. We wanted to have also an example using Cordoba. Mm -hmm. So we build a Cordoba application for maintenance and also works on all the different platforms. Um, so basically, I mean, in, in like high level, this is what we have as the applications. Yeah. And in previous years, like we kind of released all these apps together. We bundled them into a GitHub. This year, we decided to split everything in seven different repos. And so that's more or less what I'm going to share about like next. But the idea is that if you want everything, well, you know, you have seven different repos. But if all you want is like to work with Xamarin apps, for example, you just go to the mobile repo and then just get the code from there. So that's the idea. Cool. Yeah, and we'll have all the links to uh, all the repos and, and the right. previous uh, demonstration that we published out out there so folks can see. So folks don't have to worry about the little little URLs we have here and there. They'll right. have it all. Yeah. So we we also will have a blog post that goes through like all the end-to-end -end scenario, the description. We'll have the links there. Uh, but but the idea is that if you want, for example, websites, you know, this is what we have. We have, I mentioned the marketing website, and this is the company website. Right. That's, that's, the the that's, yeah. that's the Power BI. That's the Power BI, exactly. And so we use different technologies. Um, this website in particular, we actually built it using MBC and also .NET Core. So we have two versions of the same um, websites. Cool. Um, okay. Then um, um, this is very interesting, the microservices. Um, we announced uh, Visual Studio Tools for Docker during Connect. Uh, you can do like single container apps, multi container apps, and CI CD. Mm -hmm. Donovan did a really amazing demo or set of demos on this. And like, you should definitely go watch the keynote and yeah. watch the yeah, demo. Yeah, we have right? demos of this. Uh, but we bundled like two different repos with the two applications. So you can like download the code and like play with the tools where are now available and, and you can like work with them. Cool. Then um, this is a beautiful, like, good-looking um, mobile application on Xamarin. So this one, um, I think this is a very interesting application. Um, it is what the consumer will use to interact with the, uh, with the company, right? So basically, the idea is you have an application where you can um, book a bike. Um, you can um, have some integration also with events. We have an API uh, that we use from Ticketmaster. So you can get like all the events on the city, and from your same application, you can like say, I want to go to Cirque du Soleil or like any like Broadway show. You select the event, and then you can rent the bike uh, from like one station to the other and get the, trans the transaction. All that in the same application. Yeah, it's a cool, it's a cool idea, definitely. Like the, the ability to sort of map public data or data from other data sources exactly. in the application while right. demonstrating the, the power of keeping keeping you productive and getting a bike and returning the bike or, or finding something right. that you need, getting support. Yes. Um, then also um, something else you can do is like when you create a profile related to that is you can scan your credit card so you can like get like the transactions for whether you are booking an event and you can purchase the tickets. Or you can also uh, just like pay for like the subscription that you're using from the bicycle. Um, also, you can report incidents. Like I said, when you're on the road, uh, for example, like say you lose your bike, and then you can talk to a bot, right? So you yeah. can get all that from the same application. Um, we have the watch. Uh, we we made a like a version of the watch. I have it here. But why don't we switch to this machine? Sure, let's go over to the and then to the I can. Book. I can show you um, a little bit more of this application. Cool. There we go. We okay. switched over. Thank you. Perfect. So, so what I have here is the emulator uh, for Windows, um, and here I have this application that is responsive. You know that we built. Uh, the same application works on Android, works on Windows Phone, and so 
here is my Xamarin project where I have the solution. Right, and this so is the actual source code we're publishing so folks exactly, can get started. Exactly, same with thing. It. So, so we have the backend, so we have like the events I was telling you and then um, profile information. Then we have the wearables, so here's where I have like my watch code. It's a very simple application. Uh, on this one, what we did is that basically you're on the go and you want to rent a bike and I mean, you know where you are. Right. And so you say I want a bike from A to B, rent it, and basically you, you get that from your watch. Yeah. Um, then, um, I mean, the nice thing about building the application on Summerin is no matter what platform you're using, uh, you can use SAML. And you can like call your application. For example, this is my login page, and this is what um, I built. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, you know, you can use C Sharp. It's native code. It works everywhere. So um, this is my, for example, my iOS application. And for example, you can reuse views. I, for example, I have a view controller here I'm using for credit card. So have you seen those like applications where you actually scan your credit card um, from your iPhone? I've never actually seen that. I mean, I've seen the reader thing in every cab I've been in recently. Basically, like, I mean, you, we, we are reusing a, a view controller for that mm -hmm. in our code, where you can just take a picture to the credit card, and then that's how you register the information. That'd be cool. I, yeah. I, I definitely <laughs> think the whole swiping thing is kind yeah. of a dying breed. Right. And if we switch to the phone, actually, um, I mean, I have the application. This is now on, on an iPhone, right? Mm -hmm. But basically, um, I mean, the, the way it works, you know, you, you know what day is. It's kind of chilly outside. I'm in Sammamish. But I'm pulling the events from New York City because I'm going to go to New York City. Because <laughs> yeah. so it's a demo app. That's the real. <laughs> no, the and I, but, no, but let me tell you something interesting about this. This is coming from Ticketmaster. So something we're it's publishing yeah. is that we have a little tool that we use like to update the feed of data. So we're releasing that so you mm -hmm. can update you know, your own data for events. You can so make your, your demo more relevant exactly, to your geo. Exactly. Cool. That's cool, right? Yeah. So, but basically you like say, I want to go to this event. So I want to like see, you can buy a ticket and you can uh, rent a bike. So you can book a bike. And basically this will like give you a bike and it will tell you where the bike is, right? Um, you can also have like your profile information um, in there. Um, you can see your rights. Um, and then um, you can report incidents. So this is more or less the screen. So if I do something like, for example, I have a flat tire, right? So mm -hmm. flat tire um, on the front. So I'm going to report this. So these, I mean, we're using push notifications. So you're going to get a notification that this was reported. Um, and then with the yes. other application that we have, um, the Cordova application, which is like the maintenance app, like the enterprise will get a notification on like, hey, this user, you know, has a flat tire, like this right. help so, him, so right? So a tech could respond exactly. to the field. That's cool. Exactly. Um, so, so that's more or less the summary in application. So, you know, you're welcome to use the code. If we switch back to this machine, um, I'll show you very quickly the repo. Um, We're not there yet. Okay. Back to the Surface Pro. Can we go back to yep, the we're back. okay? Cool. So this is my repo. It's one of the seven repos um, where we are like releasing the same code I was just showing. Um, so we are also trying to create documentation around it. You know, like how to use it, what to demo, where's everything. So mm -hmm. we're working on that, um, yeah. and you know, we are you know happy. I mean, to know that you can use this as well. Yeah, like right, right now in, in this. In the screen, you can see it says private on top of the repo. But that's because we're recording before you, you're ready to publish, right? So yeah. you guys are still finalizing it with yes, the team. Yes, exactly. And by the time uh, the video is out and the blog post will be out, the repo will be out, right. we ship everything at the same time. Yeah. So if you're watching this, you can get the code already. That's a good point. Yeah. OK, so let's go back to the presentation and keep talking about like the rest of the app. So we talked mm -hmm. about the Cordova application. Um, this is the one where we are like. I mean, that thing I just did about like, hey, I have a flat tire. Like, yeah, it would show up tire. in that application. Exactly. Cool. So we have notification examples on both the Cordoba side yeah. and the Xamarin side. Exactly. Um, these are backend services. So again, like the way we split uh, our architecture, we're using microservices. We have Azure Functions. So we have all these microservices. We have a feedback microservice on Core. 
uh, a writes microserver, uh, a microservice on Node.js, and, and so on. We have others, right? Yeah. Uh, the partner providers, like what I was explaining about Ticketmaster, we have the external events API. Yeah. And, um, the, weather and API. the weather API. Cool. Which tells you I'm really cold in here. Yeah. Um, so, so, yeah, so that's another repo, and you know, you can go play with it. Also, we have like Azure Functions code in that same repo. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the demo that Beth Massey did. And, and this is kind of my, my next thing. So, um, I want to talk a little bit about Visual Studio Tools for Azure. Mm -hmm. um, cool. So one of the things that um, I think is like a commitment from the Visual Studio team is uh, better integration with Azure. You know, we, we want to build tools that make it super easy and simple for you to work on Azure from your uh, Visual Studio. Like, I mean, you're writing code and at the same time, you don't need to switch the portal to do things, you can do them from right. Visual St Studio. Stay in VS, right? make VS the full experience where we, where we can, basically. Exactly. So two things I want to show is like the updated acquisition experience uh, from 2017 mm -hmm. for the tooling for Azure and uh, Visual Studio Tools for Azure Functions Preview. So I want to show that quickly okay, as let's well. Do it. So let me go here. And like the very first thing I'm going to show you is our installer uh, for Visual Studio Enterprise 2017 RC. So uh, before, like with previous versions of Visual Studio, if you want the Azure SDK, it's a standalone installer. Right, right now, our latest version is 2.9.6. Of the SDK, you, you can get it. the now? version number. Oh, I know a lot of you win a prize. <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, so yeah, so that so the SDK uh, for 2015. I mean, you can download it. It's available. We released it also after Connect. Right. So you can go get the standalone um, installer. But if you're working with RC and like you're wondering where's the tools, well, guess what? It's now like integrated as part of the workload. So we have a Azure development workload. Um, and basically, that's like all the tooling you need for Azure, right? Yeah. And it, that includes ARM. It includes like, for example, the data lake tools, you know, what you do with um, like your SQL, use right. to analyze big data. Um, and then if you're wondering like, well, where, where's the Docker tools? And the Docker tools that Donovan was showing, like we have like the .NET Core and, and Docker preview. Mm -hmm. So if you install here, like, let me use like, I'm going to deselect this and just have these. This is what includes like the Docker tooling. So this is what you need to get like um, the tools we use during Connect for the demos for Docker. And yeah, I, I like how it gives you options. Like if, if you select the top one again, the, mm -hmm. the top workload. Um, at first, I kind of missed this when I was playing around with it. But uh, you do have the option sometimes to select additional things that by default aren't enabled. Right. We, we try to make the installer as compact and, and fast as possible. Right. I, I tested the installer myself after we released our seek and as the final RC bits, I was able to get up and running for UWP in my, my home desktop right. machine in 10 minutes. I mean, that was really, really yes. like eight it's and a half minutes, something like that. I wrote a blog post about it. And even though I selected a bunch of you know, optional things here, it still is very fast. So this installer, much more flexible than before. It's even smart enough to tell us that you're already running Visual Studio. Uh, one instance, you got to close it. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely something we're investing a lot into. Yeah. So, and, and again, like a lot of people were asking, well, is ARM supported in like 2017? It is, like you just need to get the right workload. Right. All right, so that's my first thing. But if you're still working with 2015, um, something really exciting we just released is tooling for Azure Functions. Um, it's a preview, um, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's one of the most exciting things. So Beth Massey, during her you know, um, demo at Connect, she talked about functions. Um, and basically, what we have, this is also integrated with the phone. Um, on the actual phone, on your profile, you can uh, get a selfie, get your profile picture. And mm -hmm. basically, we do two things with that picture. Like, we analyze it and like, uh, get you, we use cognitive services, so you can figure out like the age and the gender of a user. And we also process the image, so it looks prettier on your cool. phone app. So we do the two things. So we have a function for that. Um, um, it's in Azure. Yeah. Um, so this is the Azure portal now. You're, you're exactly. showing the code in there. So this is the code in Azure. Um, and now I'm going to switch to Visual Studio. I installed the tools. Um, to make the tools work, you need the Azure SDK 2.9.6, and you need to install the Azure tooling mm -hmm. uh, for functions. Um, and basically, it's the same, exact same code um, for my application. And the nice thing is, like, you can work on it from Visual Studio, 
um, you can right click and, and publish and deploy your function to, to the portal from right. here. Um, and also, you know, as, as I mentioned, like Visual Studio is integrated with Azure. So you can use the Cloud Explorer, for example, here, like the scenarios that we are, you know, taking this image and we are moving it to Azure Storage. Uh, as a blob, right? So from Visual Studio, you can explore your storage, yeah, you right? You can see your containers, and you your can see everything. your input and your output. Um, so yesterday, I was playing with this, and I I got my selfie in there. Cool. Um, so it, it's processed, and and then the last thing is like, um, how will the company use this information? So I have this dashboard, right? Uh, which is a private website I was talking about, and basically here, if you can see. Um, I can get like people like rights by date and gender and like by age. So I can start understanding like how is like the population of, of like my, uh, my customers, like what age range. So I can predict things like, hey, I need to buy smaller bikes or bigger bikes or like right, bikes for college kids or, or so I think this this also helps a lot uh, a business I mean and it, that's just with taking one picture yeah so, it, so it's amazing and terrifying at the same time <laughs> where technology is heading soon I know we're, but think we're about we're gonna be in trouble think about like how like when you're shopping online that's the way it is like, like you, you buy something and immediately you start getting like all these ads yes. about like everywhere. related things everywhere you go that that surface dial that you might have right. looked at at the Microsoft Store file you around not, not yeah. that I had that experience yeah and in the end like I mean it's sample code I mean we, we use it so we can show the power of cognitive services mm -hmm. and like what kind of information you can get um, it's also in Azure everything's on the cloud so you know there's there's like a good scenario yeah real, real code people can see right. how, how we did all this stuff cool. exactly so the last two things um, that we did uh, were like two applications just thinking about AI and like how we are gonna like go change the world in the future. The developers have that big mission. Yeah. Um, so as I mentioned, we have this like kiosk application. Lara showed it like you know, on the keynote. Um, it was the last demo. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a really fun demo because basically what you do is like you have the application open. Uh, it's a Udable UP application. You get close. There's like a camera view. It recognizes your face, so we're using the face API to recognize your face. Yep, there, there's our boss being recognized. <laughs> yeah. You get his picture in there. Um, yeah, and so basically uh, you get like the application knows who you are because you have your profile picture. Like it's everything all tied together. So right. you got your profile picture. Now we know who you are. So when you get to a station, imagine you forget your phone. Right. But you really need to go to work, right? Yeah. How, you how really, do, how really badly need to you? go, right? So you type in your username and password using the on-screen key. No, that's no. So you, so you <laughs> just go to a station and, and like basically you approach, you know, the, the kiosk. It will recognize your face. Uh, we're doing like a two-factor authentication. Mm -hmm. So basically, we make you like um, say a sentence. Like so, we, we're using speech. Right. Some and voice security phrase. And then exactly. So we have cool. a security phrase. So we have like the two-factor. Um, and then once you know um, you are authenticated, then the application will ask you, well, what do you want to do, right? Like you may not want to rent a bike, you may want to do something else. But if you say rent a bike, um, the application already knows who you are. Right. They have all your like information from your profile, so they will credit your uh, card, your credit card. They will just say, okay, we'll do the transaction for you, and we will unlock the bike. Um, 25 from the rack and then you can go get it and and then that's it mm -hmm. all cool. you have to do is show up yeah. so so it's it's a really nice application we are releasing the code um, this was built by our customer um, team from visual studio um, and i think it's an amazing app i mean it's, it's one of these things that it's like fun to like just go do it again and again and again yeah uh, and it's exciting because it shows like you know you don't need to go to a place and like sign in and type like 20 things you know, you just show up, and yeah, that's the it. Whole, the whole simplifying sign-in thing is right. huge. I mean, just Windows Hello on my Surface Book has been the most amazing experience. I really, like, I'm the type of person, like you, right, we, we get to a meeting, then we go to the next meeting, then we go to the next meeting, your machine is constantly going up and down with the lid, but every time I open it, it just logs me in. I, I had one time I forgot my password, I'll be right. honest, because <laughs> all I was using was visual login and my PIN, and, right. and I was like, oh, I have a password. I, f I forget what that, that even is, but it does make it much more kind of secure. The last thing you right. want to do is type your pass full password to network resources in the airport or something, right? right. It, it's much safer to do this kind of uh, 
analytics and nobody wants to be typing on some on-screen keyboard, you know, whatever, right? That, right. That's the last resort. This is And like the, the reality is like there's companies who are already using that, like Uber. Um, they use the face recognition. Yeah. yeah so you know who's driving the car, who's, who's, who's going to come and like, help you, right? So you know that and they have to use, uh, they, they're using yeah. actually. The it, these are real scenarios. We're not saying that right. the way we implement it is the most ideal security protocol right. or whatever. We're showing technology. Our, our yeah. point is to demonstrate tech, not demonstrate like security practices. But as a, as a concept, this, this concept is being fought through by other companies in the real world. And I think it right. has a lot of potential. So it's cool. Yeah. So the last thing is like the bot. So we built the bot and the scenario we thought about is customer service. So um, here's like some screens on like me chatting with the bot about like I lost my bike. When did it happen and where did it happen and let me help you. But the very interesting thing is this bot is both talking to a customer mm -hmm. and it can determine intent. And so for example, if you uh, for example, you lost your bike and you need a human to go interact with you, mm -hmm. it will go contact someone from the enterprise. And in this case, it will tell them, hey, you need to bring a bike to, to X person who is there, right? And v that's a very what Uber like experience. Your so car is about to arrive. Exactly. Your about to so, arrive. like here, like there's a help desk incident, right? Um, and then um, it w the ETA is determining on like, where's the employee? Right. And how long will it take that person to get where the customer is? Yeah, the system can be very intelligent. And I, th right. I think Uber has taught a lot of us what, what the, the future could be like for other things yeah. beyond just renting a car. And this is really awesome. It's yeah. on top of our stack. Yeah, exactly. So, so, but what do we use to build something like this? So, so something is interesting. We release also during Connect the Azure Bot service. Mm -hmm. So let me show you, you know, in case you haven't like seen it. Um, so this is a new service. It's on Azure, um, and it, you know it helps you build bots, right? What's very interesting is um, on this bot service, you have different channels, so you can pick, you know, from any different channel that you want. You well, know, what, in this is, what case, is like a channel in, in this context? So in this context, for example, it's like where will the interaction with the customer happen? Mm, so see. for example, I have my in my personal phone. I'm using Skype, right? Mm -hmm. Because you know I work at Microsoft and I use Skype sure. all the time. Um, we love Skype. <laughs> and <laughs> there's, uh, there's also Microsoft Teams now. Uh, so, so you can use that. Uh, but you can use the web chat. Or uh, we also did like the demo that we did at Connect. We did with the Facebook Messenger. Cool. Right? Yeah. So, so basically, whether you use Slack or like you, you think about where your users yeah, are Teams and where's the interaction have. happening, and cool. then you enable that. Right? So you have different channels. And it seems like you, have, you can even chat with your own bot here. Yeah, you right. can make your That's custom cool. bot. So in this case, the bot we're using, we're using Louis, which is um, um, a cognitive services, and it's used to the, uh, determine intent, right? So we have the code of the bot in here, mm -hmm. uh, and and the idea is that you can figure out, you know, what is it that the customer will want to do, and then have some responses, right? So the application actually, um, if I show it to you, it's exactly what I had on the screen before, but just like showing you how it looks in reality. Um, can we switch to this phone? There you go. Okay. So I have my bike, my bike sharing incident, uh, um, my, one my bot. So this is the Facebook Messenger bot. Um, using that same service. Um, I'm signing on this phone as Lara. Mm -hmm. So um, it's asking when did this happen? About 90 minutes ago. And so it, it will figure out like where my bike application, my bike is, right? Um, and, and this, we were making the joke that um, Scott Hanselman stole the bike, and so <laughs> oddly, the bike is in Chipotle, right? That would be very strange for Scott. You're absolutely right. He would never go there. It must be somebody else. <laughs> so in Inside humor there. Yeah. So I am at Spring Studios right now. And so this is what will um, kick off like the support incident. If you see, there was a delay in there between the two messages. Mm -hmm. This is because the bot uh, sent a message to the um, enterprise saying that I lost my bike. Mm -hmm. And it's figuring out it's going to take 14 minutes for someone to come and like bring me a bike where right. I am. 
this isn't static text, basically. It's actually trying to do the full set of transactions you would do in the real world. Yeah, yeah. And so cool. some, some of the responses, of course, it's a demo. Um, yeah. It's, you it's know. not a full bot. It's not a full implication. Exactly. We're here to inspire, not provide. Yeah, no, but in the end, it's a sample you can use. Um, it's in, in, in GitHub, too. We published it. So, I mean, you're welcome to use it. So r just wrapping up here, so uh, the code is now on GitHub, or you know, will be in a few the days. Magi right? the magic now, power imagine of uh, fast forward like when we're actually publishing this video or this recording, right? Yeah. Um, and then uh, we are um, having a blog post, and we're linking to all the repos. Again, it's seven different repos. Uh, you can get all of them if you want them, or just the one app you want. Um, it's all for you. Um, like I said. Um, this is a group of people working together. Um, it's our MVPs, people from engineering, from marketing, from like a lot of different product teams. Um, we we work on this like for two months before the keynote um, using agile technologies and like having daily standups and like using what any developer team will do. Yeah. But it's an exciting thing for us, you know, and like we're still working together on releasing all the code. Um, and we are looking forward to the next one. Yeah. So it's cool. It's a big team of people. Lots yeah. of familiar names there. Yeah. The app looks awesome. All, All right. right. And you know, Microsoft loves developers. You know, like I said, the developers. That's my favorite slide right it's, there. It's it's yeah, it's the best one. Um, it's a good time to be a developer. Like I mean, you you get to change the world like doing these kinds of things for the real world, of course. Um, but you know, it's it's out there, and you know. Um, it is a statement. Um, it's a reality. Yeah, it's what we, we believe and we try to enable. Right. Well, that was awesome. Thank you so much for coming on. Well, thank, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, it's been great. And thank you, folks, for thank watching. You. Hope you enjoyed the episode. And we'll be back in another show, I'm sure, before you know it. So keep watching. And thanks again. And go check out all the source code. Thank you. Thank you.